Welcome to Cyberholic Tutorial 1.1.10 and finally we are going to add the first content to my private website, to my small little blog website. For this, uh, this is how it looks right now. Um, what we did in the last videos was adding the side panel and the first link going to Cyberholic Tutorials, uh, loading the Cyberholic Tutorials website. Mm, and I'm going now to start to lay out this uh, website and add the first content to it. For this, I go to the pages. In the back end, I go to the pages. Here, I go to Cyberholic Tutorials. Open up that page, it's already there. And let's go for it. Currently, there is no container um, set up with this layout. Container means maybe you know it from Bootstrap. I think Bootstrap by the first one who started it with, with the grid system so that you have um, the content of your website not stick to the to the border of your of the device or the the phone so that you can really have like a small space uh, and uh, among them around them. So for this, uh, we are going to set up a container and I'm just going to explain to you why I'm adding it inside the page and not into the layout. UA container. And for the purpose of showing you the difference, I'm going to add some text in here inside container, just in case you don't know what the container really does. This is just a definition that I think that I would say nearly every CSS framework um, has taken from the bootstrap movement because bootstrap, yeah, they set up some targets and some, they set up the, the bars for certain things quite high and, and it, it, it's good like that. Um, just like uh, the grid system, how to define it, etc. It's fabulous. And yeah, Semantic has it also from like this so that you can define a container. I'm reloading the page right now so that you can see it. I just wrote some text inside a container and some text outside the container. And there you see it, that with, with, within inside the container, the text is, oh, let me zoom. I think I, I've set up some, yeah, <laughs> I've set up some screen for this, but I think I might make it smaller so that you can really see the whole device. Not the whole device, but from top to the, viewport. Okay, so here we have some text inside the container and there's uh, some surrounding. Um, it's it's a responsive element, so depending on the devices, uh, it's going to, be, it's just adapt so that you always have, you know, that the things don't get stuck to the, to the borders. Why have I put it inside the um, page itself and not inside, for example, the layout? I could have added it into the, um, into the layout so that every page would have this container um, space. Let's call it that way. Um, if I go down here, just to show it, I could have put it in here, make it like a div class pusher, div class UI container. On the Fomantic website, or semantic you, uh, website, you can see the breakpoints of the responsive layout so that you really can see, okay, how uh, does the container affect the layout? Um, just if you want to get more in, in detail about the, the width um, setup with semantic. So I could have set up this uh, in here and the result would be that every page that I create would have this container around it. But without knowing if I'm going to use some hero image or like it is called in, in Bootstrap, a Jumbotron, Jumbotron, um, I like to put it per page. It's more work because you have to, yeah, you have to add it manually to, to each page. But this way I could have like here, up here, image source equal, equal, whatever. And then there is the class UI fluid image coming from semantic. Whenever you see UI, that means that comes from semantic or formantic. And this would mean that whatever image I, I set in the source, please set it to a width of 100%. So 
So this way, if you can imagine it, I hope, then this would mean that the, the oh, I just have to zoom out. This would mean that the, the image would go from the most left to the most right side in the full width, so that you have some kind of Jumbotron function or whatever. So this is why I keep the containers inside the pages and, and don't set it up um, like fixed in the, in the layout. Okay, so this is the container. <clears throat> and now I'm going to add a header in H2. This is how you define a header in with semantic UI or fomantic UI. Yeah, there's an E missing header. And inside this header is going to be a subheader. Okay, some text. So as the header, I'm going to simply call it cyber <laughs> cyber cyberholic tutorials. Just let me zoom in again so that you can see it. Cyberholic tutorials. And as text, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is wrong. What have I done here? Class subheader and then I'm going to write as text uh, these are the tutorials that I have created for for my projects. So that others can learn. <laughs> this is cool, like, it's like five frames per second with my Raspberry Pi, but hey, it works. So that others can learn from my fails. For my errors. I don't know if this is the correct English expression for it, but I'm going to call it for my errors. Save it and refresh. Let's refresh the page. It's loading, it's loading, it's loading. H2 as header might be too big. Exactly. This is what I'm seeing right now. So I'm going to set it as an h3 yeah i'm going to set it up as an h3 h3 because i don't know if i'm going to use longer headers and then it's going to be a two row to yeah to break up in, in a second row a second line and i want to avoid that so i'm going to call this an h3 I'm doing all of this. I could change all of this inside the what you see right now to the right. We could change this directly in the Chrome developer, or in this case, the Firefox developer tools. But I want to do it the the old way, just in case that you don't have never touched it, uh, don't know what I'm talking about. Let me just show it to you. This is absolutely fabulous for for layouting and seeing previewing any changes uh, that you make to your layout. But I think that if you, if you are with Winter CMS, October CMS, then you already know. <laughs> you should know better than me what the developer tools are. So, okay, you could go in here and simply change the now H3 to an H1. I'm just going to, for the purpose of showing and bam, there it is. Okay, so, but I'm doing it the old way so that we can really just change that. I might by time with, with, the, with the future videos change it in here, but for the purpose of newbies who just get into HTML, this, this might be too much. I don't know. I'm not sure. So now we have the title and a subtitle. And what I want now beneath here is a list. And the list, if we go to Fomantic, just let me zoom out to the whole page. The list is also again with the items. Um, if you go to the list on the, oops, sorry, 
just hit the microphone. If you go to the left side, list and it's defined as UI list and then you have um, each item. Each item can have a header, can have content, can have an image. I think that for the, because I think that my page uh, is, will have quite some, it's going to be very long, I try to not to avoid any images or or whatever so that the loading, loading times would not take too much. Um, so what I want to add in here right now, we could have an ordered list. The problem is that I don't like the ordered lists that come with the um, semantic UI. So the list is, as you can see right now here, it's an ordered list where you have like the numbers, etc. And this is fine like that. But you know why I haven't tried it yet. I don't like what I like about the semantic list is this one. This example here where you have an, an icon, you can have an M image, and then you can have like um, yeah, a header and the text. And currently I'm thinking about putting the header up here and below the project for what it is. But I remember now that then it would be like Cyberholic, Cyberholic, Cyberholic page and, and all the other projects. So this is does not look that good. I would love to have like the... The icon here would be the, for example, the winter CMS plugin or whatever, uh, sorry, the winter CMS logo so that you can really see how it looks like. Mm, let me see here in content, content, I can see the images just like this. Um, the thing is this works perfect with an avatar, but I don't know if it also works like with with logos, etc. So I think that I'm probably going this way. Hmm, let me think about it. So if I'm if I'm putting in here Cyberholic, pop up, and the title just like it is in U on YouTube. Am I really just going to put in here as subline? Above should be the title and a subline. What can I put in there? Should I put in there the the category, the website. Okay, I, I got it. I'm currently, I think I'm going to put in here what it is for. In this case, for currently, for example, for private blog website. That's This is cool. So on the top right, I simply let, let me show the, the source code so I don't have to write anything by myself. I copy it, go back to my website. And in here, I'm going to paste it. Okay, now I'll zoom back again so that you can see the better the whole code. So this is how the list is structured so that you have like um, an item and inside the item you can have uh, an image or an icon uh, to be shown to the left and then you have a an header and the description of yeah, at the end of the content of that hair. So what I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing my, my mobile phone so that, that I don't have to open up a new, my YouTube, oh, perfect, here it is, my YouTube channel. And here it is. I'm going to call it, not Rachel. <laughs> Uh, there's also the href missing the reference to the hyperlink. Where is it there? And description. Okay. And because I know that I al already have like 10, 11 um, uh, videos online, I'm not going to put all the videos in here. But what I usually do is just like, okay, because this image is missing, I'm going to also in here already put in here no i'm just putting three x's in here and then load the images later on so what i'm doing now is copying this item and just for the sake of this demonstration just going to copy paste it three times no two times so that we have three items it might not look great because the image is missing and then it, it might just show as an error. I don't, I don't know. We will see it in a second. How oh, it's how it looks like. So where is it? 
ah, I have to put it in big screen, sorry, there it is. So yeah, as you can see, the image is missing um, because it's set up as an avatar. I haven't checked it. Is, this, is it set up as an avatar? Yeah, it's set up as a, uh, an avait, avatar, avatar. Then um, it's going to be rounded like that, a round image. Um, we could change that also, but the idea is to have it like this, that I say, instead of Rachel, I simply say, give it exactly the name tutorial version 1.1.0 square brackets closing and then the title is intro Duction on how to create your personal blog with winter cms i think it was something like that okay so i have the header it's quite big uh, maybe i'm going to put the hmm you know what i'm just thinking because the the, the titles are quite big and i think that i'm going to keep it just to see how it looks like i'm going to copy all of this put it as a description because at the end it's a description of the title so it fits also in, in terms of semantic html it fits better in here so save it let's see how it looks like it's going to be only the first one but we we will see it in a second how it looks like have i set it up as full screen it is set up as full screen perfect here it is I'm going, yeah, I'm going to do it like that. Um, it could be that we have to set up the, I don't know why the image is, ooh, it's taking quite some, some space, the image. You know what? I'm going to remove the image. I like it to, to, to have the titles and the description of the title and maybe a link to an external, no. No, no, I'm just going to keep it like that. You know what? I'm going to remove the image. Okay, so. Just remove the other examples. And refresh the page. Okay. Um, I'm now going to include, um, so this video is, it would, would be absolutely, uh, why is it not in the container? Where's the container? Oh, I have set a, the list outside of the container. Sorry. I have to put it back inside the container. Uh, I'm not, I'm now going to stop the video because obviously I don't want you to follow me and, and see how I copy and paste text into the items then we would have like a i don't know maybe with some nice background music to put this would be interesting but otherwise this is boring so obviously this is just to show you how i am going to at this moment i'm going to include the the titles in here mm, this is one way how you how you include or create such a list um, what I see for the future is that, let me zoom in. How can I zoom in? Like this. For the future, what I see is between, I'm going to put a spacer in here and I want to put in here um, an input field working together with a list uh, plugin called list.js. And what this does is that you can super easy filter by title, for example, so that uh, as this page is becoming longer and longer and longer, um, you don't want to go like through dozens of or hundreds of, of links. And if you search for something specific that you can really just, yeah, filter it. We will do that later on. Uh, we have this now. I'm going to include manually the text, uh, the, the videos in here mm, currently. What I have done is adding them manually. Just let me go back to the back end, back to the back end. This means that for whatever reason, 
Mm. For whatever reason, if you want to change the layout of the of the list, you will have to do it also manually. Just like what I did with with the placeholders a few minutes ago is you would just go copy and paste. Paste. There it is. And copy and paste, etc. And I think I'm not going to do it like that. I'm just going to go five steps ahead so that I will show you in the next video how we can make this dynamic. Dynamic by what I want to do, and I'm absolutely sure that this is possible with winter. Um, I want to go to this code section. <clears throat> in here I'm going to put an on start function. The function is missing, sorry. Function. I'm going to put in here a function called on start because this is the how you call it the life circle of the page creation you have on start on init on beginning and on on end I think something like that this means that <clears throat> before anything on the of the page is shown or before the page gets loaded do this PHP code and what I see currently is I'm going to wait first of all zoom in here so that you can see it better in the next video I'm absolutely sure that this is possible. So I'm taking the risk of, of mentioning it right now in this video. What I want to do in the next video is I'm going to create a JSON object in here. This JSON object is going to be something like, just an example, um, let's call it tutorials. Oops, sorry, tutorials. Tutorials and something like this just as examples that it, so that you can see it let me remove this error here because so um something is missing in here var tutorials no, I, I don't know just to just to show you it's going to be something like that sorry like this I think it was like this. I don't, I'm not sure currently. I'm, we will see in the next video. I'm going to make it like this. Um, title. Title, sorry. Title. Just abbreviation, abbreviating it like the title would be Cyberholic to Tut One, <laughs> and the link. So we are simply creating a JSON object here that is wrong on the top. So please don't follow. It. It's just to show you what I want to do. Uh, YouTube. Oh no, just we just need the, the YouTube code, something like this. Let's say this is the YouTube code for my video and subtitle sorry i was missing the subtitle subtit this is a video video one okay just to explain it to you what i have done before is adding manually every item in here and we could go like this for all the items. But as I said, if you ever want to change the layout of it, you also would have to change, you know, like everything in there. So what I'm going to do is to keep it a little bit easy, not to, ma uh, to make a so-called super multi-array um, nested, um, nested JSON object. We could call this, for example, tutorials to tutorials cyberholic and then um, put in here all the videos and if I go back to my HTML we could simply loop through a, a twig loop we can loop the content that at the end in here is going to be published something it was something like this what was it uh, page this I can't remember it anymore. No, this page, it's just to show it's like, um, it's not going to work like that, but this variable can then 
be included inside a for loop coming from twig. So this would mean that we would just set up this layout one time and he would loop through all the objects coming from within this code and insert them so that you really just need to change it here and don't need to manually whenever you want to change the whole website or the certain parts of the layout, you don't need to change it manually in per item so that you really just do it one time and he loops through it. Yeah, I think this is how I'm going to do it for the next video. So the next video is going to be about this. Um, now you know how you manually manually can add um, links, etc. and content to your website. Yeah, in the next video I'm going to do a JSON object and loop with tricks through it.